Our trip to Chile wouldn't have been complete without a visit to the capital, so towards the end of our stay, we decided to visit Santiago. We had four days to discover what the city was all about, so we set out to visit the main attractions, sample Chilean food, and explore various neighborhoods on foot. We may not have been able to see it all, but the following is our experience in the city. For anyone planning a similar trip, here's a look at 20 things to do in Santiago de Chile on your visit. So today we are visiting the Santa Lucia Hill. This is actually an extinct volcano right in the middle of the city. It's 69 meters tall and we're gonna go check it out. Santa Lucia is an urban park smack dab in the middle of Santiago and it's a popular hangout in the afternoons and weekends. The hike is a pleasant one with lots to see including fountains, spiraling staircases, defensive forts, sprawling gardens and cool lookout points. Lestaria is a neighborhood located just east of Santa Lucia Hill and it was once the bohemian hub of the city. Today it is very popular with tourists as it offers an outdoors flea market, an international mix of cafes and restaurants, and live music. And now we're going to take you to what we think is the best ice cream shop in town. It's called Emporio La Rosa. Lots of great selections and we've been coming here almost every single day we've been in Santiago. So little, that said a, something. A little bit more than we'd like to admit. Yes. Let's go in. Sam, you got your favorite flavor. Want to show us? Yes, dulce de leche. Right here. Dulce de leche. Yeah, let's take the first bite. I mean, they give such a generous portion here that not only do we get a cone, but you also get a cup as well. Yes. So it doesn't uh, melt and overflow. I really like that idea. They should be. They should do that in more places around the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Are you having a moment there? Divine. You know what? You know what really makes this dulce de leche flavor so good, especially at this place, is what? that it's a little bit salty. Really? Normally it's just really, really sweet, but there's this this kind of little tinge of salt. It just hmm. makes it awesome. That's Love unusual. It. Love it. So I got some ice cream as well, of course. So this is actually raspberries and mint. So I'm not a huge fan of mint, but I really like raspberries. No, that's an interesting combo. I've never had that before. What can you taste more, the raspberry, the raspberry. or the mint? Definitely the raspberry. Yeah. Not too much mint? The mint is a very subtle aftertaste and it just makes it a little bit more refreshing. So yeah, I'm a fan of this one. I'd recommend it. For panoramic views of the city, ride the funicular to the top of San Cristobal Hill. You can catch the funicular at Pio Nono Station and either pay to stop halfway up the hill at the zoo or ride all the way to the summit. Keep in mind that the lines tend to be a bit longer on weekends, especially as you approach sunset. Okay, so we rode the funicular and we made it to the top of San Cristobal Hill and you get some pretty spectacular views. You can see the Andes and they look like they're within reach. I know, almost makes me want to go climb them, but I'm a little too lazy. I think we'll go get food instead. <laughs> Another time. Time for a little afternoon snack in Santiago. Today we're at a restaurant called Galindo and we're going to be trying a dish that's called choridana and this is a lot like a Canadian poutine. Now if you're not too familiar with Canadian poutine that's kind of like when you get some french fries with gravy and cheese and other ingredients over top. So this is going to be similar but with a Chilean twist so we're waiting for the food to arrive now. has arrived and the funny part is this is listed as an appetizer or a starter for one person. If you have a look at that, that's enough to feed two grown people. Yes. I think Sam and I are going it's, to struggle it's, with it's this. It's our main. It's our main. For <laughs> yeah, two. definitely. Alright Sam, so it's time to give us a tour of the plate. Yes, so before I talk into this tasty little treat, yeah. I'm going to explain what we've got here. So we have tenderloin, 
onion and scrambled egg on top of those french fries. So, so it's actually a little bit different from the first time we tried churiana because that had a fried egg on top and also sausage. Yes. But this still looks but good. But this has a lot more meat. Like this yes. is a very generous portion. So dig right in, hungry boy. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That? Oh yeah. Wow, those are like really tasty onions. You can tell they've been marinated in something. And French fries. Caramelized. French, caramelized. Yeah, caramelized <laughs> onions, I think. And the French fries are golden perfection. It's just, this is going to be an awesome filling, carb loaded, delicious little treat. So we've had this dish a few times since we've arrived in Santiago and no two churianas are the same. This one is different. I mean, it has no sausage or hot dogs and that was our first experience trying churianas. Um, and also this one has scrambled eggs instead of a fried egg on top. So it's kind of nice that you can always find a bit of variety when you go to a different restaurant. And I think I am ready for my first bite. Got a little bit of everything on there. Wow. That meat is tender, isn't it? It is tender. It is tender, Lloyd, so it should be tender. <laughs> Better be tender. Wow. That's nice. In a way, it's kind of nice that they only have the beef and there's no sausage because like this is a really good cut of meat. It's very yeah. juicy, so the flavors really come through. You don't have too many competing tastes. Yeah. You don't need a whole lot of ingredients with this dish. Not when it's done well. Plaza de Armas is the heart of Santiago's historic center and it's not a bad place to do some people watching. There are lots of benches under the cover of palm trees and the place is buzzing with activity no matter what the time of day. Hi pup, you're getting a massage. Are you enjoying your massage? Have a nice smile pup. The Metropolitan Cathedral is located in the historic center of Santiago overlooking the square. The construction you see today dates back to the year 1800 since previous cathedrals were destroyed in earthquakes. When it comes to sunsets, Santiago knows how to put on a show. The best known spot in town for 360 degree views of the city is Sky Costanera, with an observatory that is open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Alternatively, you could enjoy the free views from one of the city's residential skyscrapers like we did. Since we were renting an Airbnb apartment for the duration of our stay, we had access to our building's rooftop terrace and the views were pretty spectacular. And a way to cool down here in Santiago is to go and get yourself a Pisco Sour. This is a really refreshing drink. Basically, it's a Pisco brandy, which is a great brandy. And then you combine that with uh, citrus juice and there's egg white on top and if you can see this there's a little bit of a, a brown kind of caramel color. Yeah, it's called bitter. That's bitter, exactly. So let's try this out and see if it's Salud. Oh, that's real nice. Very refreshing, very sweet, but also quite tart as well. Mm. Santiago Central Market is the place to come for the freshest food. Inside the market you'll find butchers and fishmongers, it's okay to skip that part, but if you continue your exploration you'll find rows of restaurants serving up everything from grilled fish to ceviche. We really like our ceviche so we found a place serving exactly that. <laughs> Parque Forestal is a park that forms a long stretch of greenery along the Mapocho River. It's a nice green escape in the middle of the city and we noticed it was really popular with couples who were just lounging around on the grass. Palacio de la Moneda is the seat of the President of the Republic of Chile. This is where you can come to watch the changing of the guard, but keep in mind that it only happens every other day. We just missed it.
Just underneath Palacio de la Moneda, you'll find Centro Cultural Palacio de la Moneda, which is a cultural center featuring exhibitions, design shops, and a small selection of cafes. It's a nice place to cool down and check out some art if it's a really hot day out. this empanada shop it's called Zunino and it was packed it's probably about 1 30 right now so the line really was stretching out of the establishment but we managed to place our order we ordered one cheese empanada and one fino empanada. yeah and what, what's kind of unique about that place is that that's all they do they only have yeah. these two varieties that's you either it, yeah. get your pinot beef or your cheese. your cheese. So it's a very small selection, but I think that means they really know how to make a good empanada. All right, and I'm having the cheese one and it is still piping hot. So mm -hmm. this looks really cool. I can tell that the, the pastry already before biting into it is gonna be really flaky. Yeah. Is that the cheese one for real or is it beef? Oh yeah, it's That's cheese? The cheese one. I don't oh, yeah. know how you could tell. And you know what? This is really good quality one. Like you can tell just from, if you get close up in on the pastry yeah. here, there's the attention to detail of the pastry, like it's just so flaky. Lots of watery. layers. It's just melting right in my mouth. And then that gooey cheese, oh, that is just a winning combo. All right, so I tried the cheese one. The cheese one was really tasty. Now time for Pinot. Mm. How looking there. Juicy, look at that. So, this one has beef, onions, and olive. And I've got the pit in my mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it also has egg, but I haven't bitten into that part yet. So, like, it's really nice and juicy inside, still warm. What surprises me though is the size. Like, when we made our empanada video in San Pedro de Atacama, like, those were massive empanadas. They were almost like bigger than a main course plate. But these, I'm These are more smaller. snack size, right? Yeah, I'd say they're about half the size of the ones we had in Atacama. Um, so yeah, I mean, I kind of like it because I struggle to finish those big ones. Like the ones we had in Atacama were really good for sharing, but this is like a good individual size. So it's, it's, it's not going to ruin your lunch or dinner uh -huh. so, so long as you have it as a snack. Mm -hmm. And the quality? Mm, it's really good. Look at those onions. Look at that. Ooh. There's a bit of a craft beer scene here in Santiago and Sam, you've just been sampling everything you can. <laughs> yeah, there really is. Well, it's been really hot in Santiago lately, <laughs> in all fairness to my defense. Excuses, excuses. Excuses, excuses. But this is really good quality craft beer. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the ones I've been having have actually tasted a little bit like grapefruit, so I'm interested yeah. to see what this one over here tastes like. Do you remember the name of it? Shop. Shop. It's called but Shop. What kind of shop? This is amber. Amber, amber shop. all right. And it does have a little bit of a grapefruit taste. Why does it taste like grapefruit? I don't Why? know. That that's that's the way they make craft beer mm. over here. And They've got some kind of secret here in Chile. It, it tastes good. Bida Vista is a neighborhood located just east of the city center. It's a cultural hub with lots of theaters, cinemas, cafes, museums, and restaurants. The most famed home in the neighborhood is La Chascona, the home of the famed Chilean poet Pablo Neruda. Unfortunately, no filming or photography are allowed inside the premises. When it comes to art, you have a few choices. Just across Parque Forestal, you'll find the National Fine Arts Museum focusing on Chilean paintings and sculptures. And then directly behind the museum, you'll come across the Museum of Contemporary Art, which focuses on pieces from the turn of the 19th century. Last but not least, you can wander around the small neighborhood of Paris, Londres. This neighborhood features cobbled streets, restored mansions, and it's a nice little walk if you're in the area. 
And that's a wrap for the Chilean capital. We hope you enjoyed the Santiago travel guide and that it gave you a few ideas of things to do, places to visit, and Chilean dishes to try in the city. As always, if you have any suggestion of things travelers should add to their Santiago itinerary, feel free to share those with us in the comments below. So hello from Valparaíso, that means paradise on the valley. We have a few days to explore the city and we're planning to do most of it on foot. Yes, so, and most of it is going up of hills as well. Yeah, and there's so much cool walking street art here. So we're going to be taking a few different walking tours while we're in town. Today we're doing the first one, which should be an overview of the city. And it should be fun, so we're going to take you on a little guided tour of Valparaiso. Yeehaw! To say Valparaiso is a bit hilly would be an understatement. The city is a maze of steep inclines, which means the best way to get around and save your legs for sightseeing is by riding up and down the funiculars. It might seem a bit daunting considering some of these are well over 100 years old, but they still do the job. And this is our friend the pup who has joined our tour. She's the official bodyguard and she knows where the funiculars are located, so she took the stairs instead. Hi pup! You're sweet, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. How was it? Hey, I survived. <laughs> Hi, pup. Hello, friend. Hi, friend. Hi, friend. Hi, friend. Hi, friend. Hi, friend. Someone's busy filming. Yes. This is the kind of place if you're a photographer, you do mm -hmm. not put your camera down. No, not for one second. If we can offer one recommendation for visiting Valparaíso, it would be to join one of the free walking tours towards the beginning of your stay. This is a great way to get some background history and to familiarize yourself with the various neighborhoods. The local guides know where to find the best murals, so consider this a scouting mission. You can always come back with a bit more time to explore the area with your camera in hand. Alright, so Sam, we have been walking around Valparaíso for about an hour and a half or two hours. What are your first impressions so far? Well, my first impressions are you should always give a place a second chance because uh -huh. where we were staying on the flat part of the city yeah. is not a little boring, not super yeah, exciting. A little, little boring for sure. Yeah. But once you get up on the hills, it's a whole different city. Apparently there are 42 hills mm -hmm. in the city and we're just exploring it for the first time today. And my first impressions are so much better now yeah. that we're seeing this cool It's part. so colorful, yes. so artsy and lots of fun to check out. Exactly. Another thing we really enjoyed about our walking tour of Valparaiso was the company of all the dogs. Valparaiso has a lot of strays roaming the streets, but we found the dogs to be super friendly and affectionate. We also noticed locals feeding dogs in the park and homeowners leaving water bowls out on their doorstep for strays. As for all the dogs following us, our guide told us that the strays already know his routine and they are always there to meet him at various points along the walking tour. We had a pack of seven at one point during the tour. Having a little food break, I think we're going to try some empanadas and I see that they have shrimp ones on the menu. Shrimp and cheese empanadas, so those should be really tasty. So snack time, your first deep fried Chilean empanada and this one is stuffed with cheese and shrimp. Yes, cheese and shrimp, and this is my first time to ever try one with shrimp, so this is an exciting moment. 
and they were cooked in oil. These were deep fried, so they're probably still a little mm. bit hot. Oh, the cheese is so good. I have a nice big piece of shrimp too. This is honestly one of the best empanadas I've ever had. This is incredible. And we've been walking around for a long time. Yes, so I bet and, it's even and I skipped breakfast, so yeah, that may be a factor in what I'm saying here. Okay, let's get a closer look then. Let's see. Ooh, ooey gooey, but can we see the shrimp? Okay, it's kind of in there. Nice. 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 Uh, nice. So it's a little early in the morning, but we are trying our first Chilean pisco. Is it sour? Is the pisco sour? You know, it's a little sour, but I mean, it's also quite sweet. It's kind of nice, like sugary and lemony. Like it's lemonade? almost like a syrup. It's it's a little thick. Have some. So it is day two in Valparaíso, and today we're going to do a bit more sightseeing. We're actually revisiting the area where we were yesterday because we didn't get enough pictures and video. Yes, and the light is fantastic this morning. Yes. Normally here, it doesn't get sunny until like maybe 4 or 5 p.m. Yeah, and we have blue skies today. Yes. These are the famed piano steps and it doesn't look like it when you're going down but I'll show you as soon as I reach the bottom. Piano steps! Next up, we're about to ride the oldest funicular around. This should be exciting. Yes, and this is how we've been getting around this part of town, going up and down the funiculars. Yeah. Otherwise, it's really steep. Hopefully, it won't be too rickety. This one's from 1883. So this one is definitely more rickety than the last one we rode. There goes the other one. Oh, that one. <laughs> So we weren't really planning on doing a boat tour today, but we have blue skies, the weather's great, and we finished our walking tour near the harbor. So, why so yeah, not? why not? Let's do it. We hopped aboard. It's 3,000 Chilean pesos and per person. It should give us a different perspective of the city, that's for sure. Yeah, and it's going to be a 30-minute ride, so it should be fun. The harbor tours depart from Weje Prat as soon as they get a boat full of passengers. During the outing, you'll go past container ships, tugboats, and navy vessels. Plus, you'll also have a guide on board to point out sights along the way. If you're lucky, you might even get to see some sea lions basking in the sun. my breath from the last hill we finished climbing. Right now we're visiting the neighborhood of Bella Vista and this is where the open air museum is located. This is basically a collection of little streets and lanes with lots of street art and colorful murals. So we're going to be walking around and checking out the art. We were originally planning to do another walking tour, Yep. but it's a really sunny day, so we decided to have a beach day instead. So we'll be taking the train over to Viña del Mar, getting some seafood, some sunshine. So just mixing it up here, and yeah. we were hoping to go to this place before we left, so I think we made the right decision, hopefully. Viña del Mar is a super quick day trip from Valparaíso. 
The two cities are only 8 kilometers apart and you can easily get there with the above ground metro system that runs along the beach. It's only a 15 minute ride and it's quite the change in scenery. Whereas Valparaíso is colorful, artsy and gritty, Viña del Mar is a bit more chic and modern. That being said, while we enjoyed our day trip to Viña del Mar, we were really glad we decided to stay in Valparaíso as we felt it had way more character. Are you cute, pup? Are you cute? We made it to the beach and we're soaking in some rays. Still a little bit windy because it's early in the morning so I've got my scarf on. But I think the day's gonna it's warm like up. 25 degrees. There's no reason for you to have a scarf right <laughs> it's now. It's chilly. Just saying, just saying. And yeah, it's kind of cool here. It's really different from Valparaíso. Lots of condos and hotels along the beach. Um, lots of seafood restaurants. Yeah, it couldn't, really... really couldn't be any different. You can tell this is kind of like a, maybe a popular weekend destination for yeah. people living in Santiago or nearby. It's less artsy and more upscale, I would say. So our time in Valparaíso is coming to an end. What are your final thoughts of the place? Yeah, that's a wrap from here. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved it here. It was one of the coolest cities that I think we visited on this entire South America trip. Yeah. What was really unique for me, obviously, was going up to the hills and yeah. seeing all those artsy, gritty neighborhoods. This is a city I've never been to before. Like, I backpacked in 2010, and this is somewhere I didn't get to go to. And I really, Finally, a yes. new destination for Sam. Yes, a new place <laughs> for me. A lot of these, these places on this trip haven't been new for me, so this mm -hmm. was a little bit extra special. And so I really loved it here, and I would highly recommend you come. And the views are so cool. We have to show you the views from our balcony. Look at that. You get to see the hills, the colorful hills. Bye, Valparaíso. After close to a month traveling around Chile, Sam and I hopped on a plane to visit Easter Island, known locally as Rapa Nui. This was the closest we were ever going to get to this remote speck in the ocean, which also happens to be the southeasternmost point of the Polynesian Triangle. We gave ourselves one full week to explore Isla de Pascua, and what follows is a travel guide of our time there. We hiked ancient volcanoes, stood face to face with the Moai, watched spectacular sunrises and sunsets, and road tripped around the island while wild horses ran alongside. It was an incredible week and we hope this video will inspire you to plan your own visit to Easter Island. So it is our first morning on Easter Island. How excited are you? Beyond excited. This is <laughs> this is incredible. This is a place I never actually thought I was going to visit in my lifetime. And we're going to start off the day by climbing a volcano because why not? So That's how we let's roll. Do it. Let's go. This is the beast we're planning on tackling right in front of us. That's an extinct volcano crater right ahead. Dogs leading the way for us. Which way, pups? Dotty. Lead the way, pups. Dotty. You just witnessed an animals in the wild moment. We have two dogs who have been following us since we left the town and they've been walking along, you know, keeping us company. And then one of them saw a chicken and it decided that's gonna be my breakfast and it just popped went for it, caught a live chicken, chicken died, and the dog had breakfast, so. That's country living. Country living, that's what happens. <laughs> Rano Cow is 324 meters tall, and it is located on the southwestern tip of Rapa Nui. 
We hiked all the way from town and because of its gradual incline, we found it to be a relatively easy activity. That being said, we would recommend doing it early in the morning since there were very few shaded areas along the way. We made it to the top! Woo! Yes. I feel like we've earned it. There's ways you can cheat by taking the car. You can here. drive up to the top like a whole bunch of people have done, but we were up early and we almost made it here. Yes, we did. Feeling accomplished. The Ranu Kao Crater is a protected area so you're not allowed to climb into it. However, you can get some really cool views of the interior by standing along the rim. Here's a little fun fact. Because the crater is sheltered from the winds, it has developed its own microclimate and also has vegetation you can't find elsewhere on the island. So we've reached the top of Orongo, but the hike is not over yet. The trail continues and apparently we're going to get some really cool views of tiny little islands just off of Easter Island. They're like little islets, I guess you could say. So let's go. Let's go. Orongo is a village and ceremonial site located just past the Ranokau Crater. Unfortunately, it started pouring rain shortly after we reached the site, so we didn't get to visit, but we made plans to return later that week. That evening, we made our way into Hangaroa to watch the sunset from the harbour. There were lots of surfers out on the water and the waves kept rolling in and crashing against the rocks. Meanwhile, we enjoyed the show with ice cream cones in hand. So it's Sunday morning, 9am right now, and we are going to Catholic Mass. This was a suggestion by our host who's renting us the cutest little cottage. She said this is mostly for tourists, so I'm not really sure what to expect, but we were a bit curious, so we're gonna go check it out. Pretty cool church service it was unlike any I've ever been to before it was pretty cool because a lot of the songs they sang were actually in Rapa Nui it wasn't in Spanish um, and also just the clothes they were wearing like I don't really know the terminology for this but the priest had like feathers on his yes head. and some dogs made it in as yeah, well some dogs came into the service lots and, of like, music it was also a... had kind of like a lay I don't know if they use that word here or if, we're, or if that's just in Hawaii but he had like a flower necklace he was wearing so it was pretty cool it was nice seeing the the culture and how that's incorporated into the local church service so if you happen to be on the island on a Sunday you can check that out after attending Mass, we hopped over to the Artisan's Market located just across the street. Here we found all sorts of souvenirs including miniature Moai statues carved out of stone and wood, as well as postcards, magnets and jewelry. After the market, we took a walk to Ahu Tahai, which is a ceremonial complex that holds three different ahus or platforms with Moai. Perhaps the most famed of the three is Ahu Kote Riku, which stands out from the rest because it has restored eyes. Having already visited Ahu Tahai by day, we still made it a point to come in the late afternoon. The complex is just a short walk to the north end of town and it also happens to be the best place to catch the sunset on the island. From this spot, you can watch the sun paint the sky all shades of persimmon pink and gold before finally setting behind the moai and then dipping beneath the ocean. So 
Day three on the island and look at what we just got. Our official Rapa Nui stamps. How cool are those? Very, look at the face of the very Moai. cool. Best souvenir ever. So we just finished renting a car and that calls for a road trip around Easter Island. So our first stop is Rano Raraku. I'm probably butchering the name, but I think that's the site you've been most excited to visit. Yeah, this is the place we've been really wanting to go to and I can't believe it took us until what, day three? Day three to actually do it. But yeah, there are hundreds of moai here, many of them unfinished, a lot of them toppled over. So it's pretty cool to just walk around and see so many of them up close yes and we've got the car for 48 hours so there's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of road tripping left to do yes rano raraku is yet another volcano crater found on the island and it is also the site of the quarry that supplied the stone for the hundreds of moai that can be found on the island the quarry is believed to have been in use for a span of 500 years up until the early 18th century when activity ceased it would also appear that this site was abandoned in a rush since many of the moai here are unfinished. Now we're heading inside the crater of the Ranu Raraku volcano and there's a lake in there. It basically looks like a wetland. It's pretty cool, quite green. So yeah, have a look. You can see, there it is. And there's Sam filming in the background. After seeing the moai scattered on the slopes of the volcano, we took a little detour and hiked into the crater. This area is home to a lake with reeds. We also spotted wild horses and a few moai inside the crater, which is quite unexpected. From there we continued on to Ahutongariki for a quick visit. This site is home to 15 moai, making it the biggest ahu on the island. Set and we're driving back to a spot that we've already been to before and that's Orongo and we're gonna get some nice views of the crater from there and I think sunset should be pretty spectacular. We'll be looking out at the ocean. Woohoo! Good morning. It is day four on Easter Island. Sam, how are you feeling? Grumpy? Did you sleep well? Grumpy, a little bit tired still, but we're up for a very special reason. Yes, we're here to watch the sunrise. So we drove back to the 15 Moai where we were yesterday and it should be pretty spectacular. The sun is starting to break through, so we're going to show you that. The best place to catch the sunrise in Rapa Nui is at Ahutongariki. We made the drive in the dark and we arrived just as the sky was beginning to show its soft morning colors. It's also worth noting that when we visited in March, sunrise was happening around 8.20 a.m. So we weren't up that early. We're back on the road, we freshened up, had our breakfast, and right now we're visiting Ahu Akivi. And these are the only moai on the whole island that look out to sea, so that's pretty unusual. So it's not the best time of day for light, but hopefully you can see them 
just over there. There's seven of them here. Coming across wild horses. Right behind me. So like three or four in the afternoon but we're hungry and we love this place it's our favorite spot on the island so let's go in making new friends i think the pup wants ceviche it's waiting for our order to arrive don't you yes you like your fish you like your fish <laughs> All of this. Our ceviche has arrived. This one is Sam's and it looks like his has shrimp. Mine is strictly local fish, catch of the day. Couldn't tell you what the name of the fish is, but it looks amazing. Got rice, sweet potatoes, salad. Let's dig in. That's good. I just love the lime and cilantro that they put on this. It's amazing. My favorite. So that was a pretty fabulous meal, wouldn't you say? Yes, we're full. We're never too full for ice cream. Waiting for your cone. Three scoops. Three scoops. I would like to point out that Sam ran off with his ice cream and Why left so me. Big? He left we me to pay a and a cone for everything. It. And this is our, probably our favorite spot to eat. Like they have awesome artisanal ice cream. Uh huh. And it's really good value. Like it's not expensive, and the taste is amazing. Okay, Absolutely. so do you know the flavors you're having here? So you've got three flavors I've going on. I've got mint. On. Mint. I've got um, Malpaga. Which is Malaga. Like, Malaga, which is like rum and raisin. And the other one was Tyrone something. I don't um, remember what that is. It, it had hazelnuts in it. I remember you're that. You're having a hard time keeping your the camera up. You're it's so, melting. So excited to be yours. I'm having uh, raspberry ginger. And I better start eating since it's melting. One of the best decisions we made on our trip was to rent a car so that we would have the ability to explore all of Easter Island. On one particular afternoon, we hopped in the car and decided to drive the full island loop. We got to enjoy landscapes, the waves crashing along the rocky shores, and we also encountered many wild horses. It was one of the highlights of our visit. We are finishing off the day with a trip to Anakena Beach and Sam just loves the beach so we had to come here. Yeah. Marai. I love it so much for coming tomorrow just for her.
morning. It is day five on Easter Island and it's actually our last day with a car so we're trying to make the most of everything. So back first at the stop, beach. Back, back at, at the, the beach. beach, yes, back at Anakena Beach. We were here yesterday, but we thought we'd come and get some pictures. And next up, we're going to head back to the Orongo Crater, or no, to Orongo Village, because last time we were there, it started pouring rain and we had to run back. So we didn't get to see much over there, so we'll be driving there next Fingers up. Fingers crossed for better weather. Mm-hmm. visiting Punapau and this is where the Pukau were carved and those are the red stones that you see on top of a lot of the Moai and they're not sure if these were meant to resemble top knots, turbans or hats but you can see them off in the distance. Punapau is a quarry with red volcanic rock and although it is much smaller than Ranuraraku, all of the head pieces that you see on the Moai across the island came from this very spot. Later in the day, we finally made it back to Orongo, where the rain held up. The village consists of round-walled buildings made out of flat stone, and there's a trail that winds through the entire village. So it is nighttime here in Hangaroa, Easter Island, and this evening we're going to a cultural dance performance. Should be fun. Let's go check it out. Time for a tour of our little cottage here on Easter Island. Yeah, this is our last day here and we thought we'd just show you the house. We've had a really low-key day. I mean, it's been awesome. We've been able to have such good weather on this island and we've mm -hmm. like covered basically everything we wanted to do. So this last day, we've really done basically nothing. Well, it was pouring rain this morning as it well, was, so that, we couldn't go anywhere. I mean, that's part of the luck we've had though. We haven't had rain except yeah. for on the day we didn't need to do anything. All right, so time for the house tour. Lead the way, sir. Up the steps. So this is a kind of basic accommodation you can find on the island. Uh -huh. This feels like House Hunters International. Living Here's room. The living room. Yes, followed the by the, the, the dining area. Here we have the kitchen, which is a little messy at the moment. And our messy humble abode. This is the bedroom we've been staying in. So yeah, we, beds. we've we've been staying here with my parents and they have a room over there. So the fancy room. And we also have a little bathroom. Ta-da! Hello! Um, yeah, so accommodations on Easter Island are very basic and a little pricey. For this cottage, we paid 830 US dollars for the week. Yeah. And that's pretty standard. Yeah, exactly. So if you come here, uh, if you don't have a huge budget, this is the type of place you're likely going to be staying at. Yeah. Ciao, Rapa Nui. And just like that, our week on Easter Island was up. 
Rapa Nui is one of the most fascinating places we have ever visited, and we love getting to explore every inch of the island. Now it's over to you. Have you ever been to Easter Island? Is it a place you'd like to visit? Let us know in the comments below. of San Pedro de Atacama in Chile. We've been here a few days taking a few different day trips to visit volcanoes and lagoons and see flamingos and yes. do lots of cool stuff. We've seen lots of wildlife, we've seen some mm -hmm. amazing landscapes. And now we're going to show you the town. It's actually quite small and there isn't a lot to do but if you're taking tours from here you're gonna end up spending a bit of time in San Pedro. So yeah, let's go take a little tour, a little look around. Sounds good to me. Bienvenidos a San Pedro de Atacama. Si. And this place is pretty cool because in the distance, in the background, you can see volcanoes. You have volcanoes? Yeah. Right? Over there. Let me run out to the street. There. to take you down a street called Caracoles. And this is like the main street in the whole town. This is where you can find ice cream shops, bars, restaurants, tour operators, laundry places, whatever you could need. And let's move it this way, this way, this way. impressions of the town after having spent a few days here? Yeah, it's a decent place to hang out. This is not the kind of town where you come to linger. It's a launching pad for a whole bunch of other activities. You can mm -hmm. also go to Bolivia to do the uni salt flat tours as well. And you can also cross over to Argentina to go to Salta, which is what we're going to do tomorrow. Yeah, so come here, book a tour, take some trips and eat well. Yes. stop of this little tour of San Pedro is the main square. Yes. This is where you'll find live music and a lot of dogs running around. Yes, and live music is happening as we speak. everyone. Today you'll notice I'm not traveling with Audrey or my parents. Yesterday we did a marathon session of 13 hours of tours so understandably they're back at home resting but today I'm gonna go out and show some different areas in and around San Pedro de Atacama and these are different from what we did before. We're gonna be focusing on lagoons and the altiplanos and we're also gonna be visiting a salt flat so lots of cool stuff planned for today. I've really enjoyed about the tours here is the fact they've all left really early in the morning that's been awesome for photography because of the nice soft light in the morning and also great for spotting wildlife It's 
Pinto Yena. Breakfast was awesome. I'm totally stuffed. Today we had omelets and we also had bread and we had Carlitos again. So it was a really good meal and now we're ready to move on. Grado 10 and I thought I'd share the thought process behind that. So number one, the vehicles are a lot bigger than the typical ones plying these roads. Uh, a lot of the vehicles that, that you'll see on, on these tours are like little minivans and they tend to have problems sometimes on these off roads so taking a big truck was really good. And the other reason we decided to go with this company too is because of the awesome windows on this vehicle. This is like a safari truck so you know the tour cost a little bit more and we did get a few extra things like we had a really nice breakfast we had uh, on the first day we had pancakes we had really nice juice coffee bread and today we had omelets I've noticed on other cheaper tours you get a lot more of a simple breakfast it's just like bread and maybe maybe juice and that's it so this was a really good choice for us it cost a little bit more but you know sometimes the extra comfort is worth paying for Flamingo Reserve. Time to go spot some flamingos! about the tour today to really keep in mind is that the elevation does go above 4,000 meters above sea level so that means that altitude sickness can be an issue and also getting a sunburn is very common in this type of weather because you're up so high so you really really need to slather on that sunscreen <music> So that marks the end of the tour. The highlight was definitely the Flamingo Reserve and the Salt Flats. sure changes quickly here in the Atacama Desert. When we went to visit the Gazers this morning, we were freezing. It was so cold. And this afternoon, we're planning to tour the Valley of the Moon and we are melting. Like seriously, it must be like high 30s, maybe even low 40s in Celsius. I feel like it's Samuel a la Parisia. His first Spanish joke, Sam on the grill. <laughs> this afternoon's tour is called Quebrada del Coyote and our guide was saying that this is like the iconic postcard shot that you see on all the guidebooks and it is pretty impressive. Voila! Into the deep dark cave. Actually it's not very big and it's not very deep or very dark but it is a lot cooler than out in the desert so I wish yeah, I was five foot six, it's not six foot one. Ah. Spooky, we're only seeing shadows and darkness. We should have brought a flashlight. Should have brought a flashlight. We're like little ants 
in a tunnel. Yes, so the, I'm an ant that's way too big for this little ant tunnel. <laughs> the queen ant! I'm the queen ant. I should be out enjoying paradise somewhere else. expecting to crawl through yeah. a tunnel. It started off too easy and we're like, mm -hmm. see you in a cave. And yeah, then, I know. And then it became hardcore caving. <laughs> and it was pitch black and we didn't bring flashlights. But, but the best part about this was that it allowed us to cool off. It was so hot before we came in here. Yeah. The end is nigh. The end is nigh. No, seriously though, this is our final stop. We have to climb a dune. Or some hill. It's gonna take us about 30 minutes. Once we reach the top, we get to watch the sunset. Woo! And then we get food back in town. <laughs> yes. And what you don't realize is this is our second tour of the day. This is gonna yeah, be our a long day. this is the second video coming up, but we did all of this in one day. We started at 4 a.m. and right now it is what? Seven, sunset. Sunset time. Let's go watch the sunset. <laughs> Valley de la Luna tour. We are tired, hungry, and ready to go get a rest. Ciao! Well, somebody looks all bundled up this morning. I know. Good morning from the chilly Atacama Desert. Yesterday we arrived in San Pedro de Atacama and we booked a tour to visit El Tatio Gazers. Um, and we had to be up at 4 in the morning. It was a really early start. And now it's probably around 7, but it's still freezing. But I'm told we're going to get chocolate pancakes. Plus we're going to see some pretty cool <laughs> gazers. So it should be a really fun outing. I think you're holding out for the pancakes. pancakes. is the highest gazer field in the whole world and according to my lonely planet there should be around 64 gazers although our guide did mention there's closer to 80 so who knows maybe there are new ones sprouting up and you look ridiculous <laughs> with your blanket which you stole from the vehicle so stolen cold. blanket stolen blanket it's alert so cold. Okay, yesterday when we booked the tour, we were told it might be close to like zero degrees, maybe even 10 below, but I didn't believe it because it was so hot in the town. So I'm wearing leggings and I have an alpaca sweater and a windbreaker, but it's not enough. It's not enough. I want to jump in, jump in one of the gazers. They look really warm. You go do that. Okay. Well, so this is not your first visit here, Sam. So can you tell us how does it compare coming back a second time? <laughs> well, my the first time I came here, I was incredibly dunce, okay? I came wearing shorts and I didn't even have a sweater on. I thought I was gonna die of hypothermia. So this time I'm more well prepared, but prepared. even so my hands are still cold. Let's see, outfit of the day. Outfit of the day, sweatpants. I got my alpaca, alpaca sweater, sweater I've got orange. my jacket and I've got my mitts. So, so kind of toasty, kind of. Sort of, kind of. Relatively compared to last time, yes, very toasty compared to last time. Pretty 
like hot, but it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so what you doing, Sam? I'm what you doing? I'm up my frozen fingers. Mm-hmm. <sighs> So this is our sweet ride in the background. Yes. This kind of reminds me of something of kind of like a hybrid safari vehicle in Africa. Mm -hmm. and something you would take up to Churchill, Manitoba to look at polar bears. Yes, it's kind of like a monster truck, but for tourists. It is so nice and warm. This has been the most relaxing part of the trip so far. Mm. I do not want to leave, although breakfast is tempting me. Chocolate pancakes! Chocolate pancakes. Breakfast is soon to be served. We have some cake and dulce de leche and tea and coffee and juice and the pancakes are being made and there's cheese so it should be tasty yes please hungry cheese hungry. yes please so tell us about that delicious breakfast we just polished off breakfast was awesome it mm -hmm. was worth the wait i don't think we eat till around 9 30 so we were hungry like yeah. we started this tour at four in the morning, yep. so five and a half hours before food. So what did we have? The highlight was by far the pancakes with dulce de leche. Yes, oh. and we had grilled sandwiches yes. with ham and cheese. They were like Carlitos. Yes, and cake. Yep. And what else? Tea. Orange and juice, coffee. tea, coffee. So we're well fed and yes. ready to hit the road again. Yeah. minute stop in a village called Machuca and there's a new part and an old part to the village. The older construction is over a thousand years old so Whoa. we're gonna go find some of those ruins. There's some churches out here as yeah. well. But apparently the civilization has been here for over 8,000 years so that's a long time. That's impressive. Look at you, so sweet, so sweet. Look at those little eyes. Oh. So we can get some pretty cool snacks in this town. Tell me all about it. Yes, if you're in the mood for a tasty treat, there is meat back there, and it's not just any kind of meat. It's alpaca skewers, barbecued right behind me. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yum, yum. Are you going to get some? You know what, normally I would, but I'm so full from that pancake breakfast. I had over four pancakes, cool. so oh. four and a half actually. Whoa. So I'm still stuffed. The truth comes out. The truth is revealed. Like a flamingo today, aren't you? I'm waddling one, like one too. Actually, flamingos don't waddle, but the cherry on top of the cake here for this tour was getting to see flamingos. I was thinking, you know what, maybe we're not gonna get to see them, but right at the last stop, yes, we get to. And we're now at our final stop of the tour. We're checking out this really cool gorge that's really green. And yeah, it's been an awesome tour. We saw some amazing landscapes, lots of wildlife. We ate some tasty pancakes. <laughs> so yeah, if you're ever traveling around Atacama, this is a really fun tour to take. Yeah. 
Well, good morning. As you can probably tell from the sunglasses and t-shirt, we have left Bolivia and we are back to much warmer weather. Yesterday, we crossed over to Chile and we are visiting Arica, which is actually a border city that sits between Chile and Peru right at the very top. Um, so yeah, we're right by the beach, warmer weather, and yeah, today we're gonna go out and explore. probably tell the story of how we got to Eureka. <laughs> yeah, there's a pretty good one involved in that. First off, we'll say that that bus ride was one of the most scenic we've ever been on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely incredible coming from La Paz to Eureka in terms of going from a high altitude destination all the way down to sea level. Yes, it was supposed to take about seven or eight hours. Yeah. And it took over 15. <laughs> Almost six hours at immigration. It yes. was probably honestly the biggest gong show of an immigration mm -hmm. I've ever seen they had one immigration officer processing all of the people on the bus so there were literally hundreds of people in line yes and yet they had other immigration officers like sometimes two or three just checking out one car like it just totally didn't make sense and there had just been a strike in Bolivia a few days ago so they had just opened the border and there were hundreds of people who wanted to get across because they had been waiting for days yeah but anyways so. that's part of the adventure so we're <gasps> We arrived last night exhausted, but now we've had a good night's sleep and we're excited to explore Eureka. Yes, the city looks great. So one of the coolest things about arriving in a city and having no plans is that you just encounter all these <laughs> random things and there appears to be a market setting up right now. Yeah, it's still a bit early, about eight in the morning or so, so it's just getting started, but I think it's gonna get busy later on today. like a vintage market where they're selling used clothing although I did see some boots that were selling plants and teddy bears so I guess you can find a little bit of everything here and it looks like we've come across yet another market this one's more like a farmers market so they're selling fresh produce let's go through farmer's market and you walked away with a piece of electronics. Yes. So every country has different electrical power outlets. Uh-huh. But Chile takes the prize for having one of the strangest. Check That's this out. Three prongs. Let's show that from three the skinny little prongs. Yeah. So we were having trouble plugging in this morning, so this was a really timely find. Yes, for under a dollar. at the bus terminal buying tickets for our next destination. Want to tell us where we're going? Yes, San Pedro de Atacama. And what is funny is we went to a bus company called Atacama and they do not go to Atacama. We had to find another one. Which yeah. bus did we go with? Uh, I think tour, tour something. Tour something. I forget, but we tour have tickets. Yeah, yeah, we're tickets. going, we're That's going. That's the main thing, night bus. Yes. So as you can probably tell from the sign, we are having Peruvian food in Chile. But don't worry, we are planning to eat Chilean food while we're here. It's just, you know, Peru is so close and we love ceviche and we found this restaurant. So we had to go in. And a gida gallina.
with that fantastic meal. That seriously was fantastic. I don't give a lot of restaurant meals an A+, but I do for this one. Authentic Peruvian food done at a high level. is a wrap for Arica. We didn't make it to the beach no. or any museums <laughs> or any major landmarks as a matter of fact. But I mean, that's what our stop here was all about. Just resting, buying tickets to San Pedro. Yeah, and we got to see flea markets and some other things. We had good food and that's all we really wanted to experience. Now we're on to a new destination. Yeah, so great impressions from the city. We would definitely recommend it as a pit stop. And yeah, Arica was fun.